let's just um, <clears throat> just wanted to remind us about uh, Philippians chapter one and verse six. Um, we've seen this verse before. It says, "Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion." Like the one, the Lord who has started the good work uh, will bring it to completion. Right, and um, another verse that we can look at is Hebrews. Um, Hebrews chapter 12, and verse 2, we read, uh, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Right, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, the perfecter, the one who originates, the one who starts our faith, and the perfecter of our faith, the one who matures our faith. Okay, and Philippians here, one six um, also talks about a similar thing. It says that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of uh, Jesus Christ. The Lord is working in us, right? Uh, each and every day, the Lord is working in us. Um, all we need to do is uh, yield, be submitted, be surrendered to his leading and to his working. And we will see that he uh, perfecting us, you know, perfecting our faith and completing and bringing everything to completion. You know, the, the work that he has started in us, he'll bring it to completion until the day of Christ. Right? So let's pray and let's, um, um, let's just say, Lord, um, whatever work you're doing, oh God, uh, I, know I don't want to be a hindrance. Right? I don't want to be a stumbling block to the work that you're doing. Uh, I want to cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit, right? I want to um, uh, yield to the work of the Holy Spirit so that you can bring things to completion in my life so that, uh, you know, the, the faith, um, the, since you are the author and the perfecter of my faith, that you will bring uh, my faith to maturity, right? Okay, so let's, um, so let's just pray. <laughs> Excuse me. Father, we, we just want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for these promises, Lord, that um, you're the one who who brings, Lord, uh, everything to completion in us, Father God. And uh, we thank you that you, Lord, begun a great work in us, Lord, um, a good work in us, Father God. And we, we acknowledge that. We recognize that. And we acknowledge that, God. And uh, Father God, we thank you that your promise is that you will bring it to completion uh, until the day of Christ. Lord, we pray that uh, each and every day, Master, that we will just yield to your leading, your prompting, and the work of your spirit, Lord. And uh, Lord, um, the work of edification that's happening in the inner man, Lord, strengthening us, refining us. Lord, we, we yield, Lord, and we, we ask, oh, Father God, that, um, that you would uh, prepare us, that you would strengthen us, that you would bring our faith to maturity, to completion, Father God. Even as we look, Lord, towards you, Father God. Lord, I, we pray that our focus will be un, unbroken, that we will not be distracted even as we, um, Lord, even as we go through life's journey, God, that we will continue to, Lord, have our focus on you, um, that we will not be distracted by uh, this and the other or by, or by the, through the challenges of life, Lord, that we will not be distracted. Lord, I, I pray that we would, um, Lord, maintain uh, or keep that same intensity and passion, Lord, uh, for your name, for your word, for the work of your spirit, um, Lord, that we will have that same intensity, O oh God. And uh, yes, to this end, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands, Father God. Pray that you'll continue to build us in the inner man, that we will be strong in the spirit and the power of your might, O oh God. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Philippians 2. Right? Philippians 2, maybe we'll read from 12 onwards. Um, just a quick review. So he says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. <coughs> Holding fast 
the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Okay, so, um, so quick review. He says, you know, my beloved, as you always obeyed. So the the Philippian church, the Philippian believers. Um, from this, we see that they've been quite dedicated, quite committed, and uh, it's it's not as if they they chose to, you know, please uh, Paul uh, only when he was there, you know, uh, in 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 the works of the Lord and, and doing anything. Uh, for the Lord, it was. It is only. Uh, it is not just. Uh, it's only when Paul was there, but uh, but even in his absence, uh, as he heard reports about them, that they would, uh, they you know they would, uh, they were quite uh, a faithful people, and uh, and to the Lord, right? So now he he says, work out your own salvation, okay, with fear and trembling. So what does that mean? Work out your own salvation. You know, does it mean that uh, you know you do? Uh, what you have to do in order to get saved, right? So the question is, you know, is he is he talking about that? You know, is he talking about, uh, you know, you become saved or you get saved uh, and you work it out somehow, right? So we know that he's writing to believers. He, in, we know that he's writing to you know, people. In fact, he says, right, um, being confident of this, that he who has begun a good work will bring it to completion so he's uh, he's talking about people who are born again and in whom the lord has started a good work and in fact he is encouraging them yes uh, you know this is what uh, will happen uh, 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 according to the lord uh, lord's promise and that he is going to you know bring it to completion so uh, he's definitely not talking about um, you know, working out your salvation in that sense. Okay, so, so what is this? Uh, you know, working out mean it means to you know fully finish or fully, um, uh, fully live out or work out or accomplish, right? Uh, things that are proceeding from your salvation. Okay, so in other sense, in other way, what are some things that we need to work out, right? Uh, we know that we are justified, but we need to live a life of consecration, right? So consecration is something that is an ongoing, uh, everyday process. And what what does that mean? That means that we need to live a life that is set apart, set apart from unrighteousness, set apart for uh, righteousness or for for God. So um, so it means that we are. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a it's a process. It's an everyday thing, right? So, um, okay. Then the other aspect of it is, <clears throat> even as we choose to live a life of consecration, you know, our minds need to be renewed, right? Our mind needs to be renewed. Our thoughts need to be renewed to what? To the Word of God, so that our will, uh, our our desires and our choices become aligned with what God wants. Right? It, it becomes aligned to the will of God, the way, the word of God and the ways of God. So that will happen only when our mind is renewed. Because scripture is very clear. So if you are carnally minded, you cannot please God. For a carnal mind is enmity with God. Okay, where do we read that? Acts chapter 8. No, it's a carnal mind, a mind that is set on fleshly things, is enmity. So which means that for our mind to be set on spiritual things is something that I need to work out. To, to see transformation in my life, I need to renew my mind. This is something that I need to work out so, so that my soul is renewed. My mind, will, emotions, everything is renewed. Right? So in that sense, he says, work out your salvation. Work out your own salvation. You are saved. Now you work out. Live that out, right? Uh, with, with fear and trembling, and right? with reverent fear uh, um, and trembling. For it is God who works in you. Okay, God works in us. The Holy Spirit indwells us, and He, 
excuse me, sorry. Uh, so he works in us. So what does he do? What work does he do? Right? Both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Okay, so that's uh, that's a good thing. So, well, the Lord influences us. The Lord empowers us. He uh, gives us his resources. Right? He uh, challenges us. He prompts us. He leads us. So he does all that. And he works in us both to will. That is, to come to a place of using our will like he will not decide for us but he will enable us to decide enable us to make a choice okay um, that 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 word will it means to to be determined right to determine something to purpose to resolve to do something like right? to decide so um so both to decide to to will and to do okay to uh, that is coming to a place of doing something okay so to decide something is is one thing right uh, but to actually effectively work what you've decided what you've planned that's the other side of it so the so god is the one who works in you both to will and to do he helps us now he will not decide for us he will not make the choice for us right we have to make the choice okay so but it but it's god who works in us he effectively works in us both to will you know the, that word works it's uh, it's again that word uh, uh, which we have seen before in a gale which means effectively you know to to be active to be fervent to be mighty in us and that's the you know, that's the work of the spirit right he leads us into truth he he um, you know warns us and uh, and he's, he leads us and uh, you know he shows us he he he, uh, he in fact uh, enables us to uh, live a consecrated life and so on all that he does he separates us unto himself and uh, he speaks to us and right? warns us encourages us so all this he does both to will to bring us to a place of decision and to empower us to carry out the decision you see that's the work of god so he's saying you know work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is god who works and god who I'm sorry, God who enables you to will and to do. He's the one who works in you with this mighty power effectively. Right? So he's the one who do that, who does that. And he does that for his good pleasure. So which means that uh, you know we delight his heart when we when we allow him to work in us both to will and to do. And and the things that it, it, it brings us, uh, I mean, it brings him great satisfaction and pleasure uh, when we allow him to do that. He works in us to will and to do. Of course, the choice that he, that, that you know, he uh, enables us to make a decision, which is a right, righteous decision. He enables us to uh, carry out something which is a righteous deed. Maybe it's saying no to the work of the enemy, uh, um, no to the things of the flesh, and saying yes to you know uh, the works of god so he he does both that and it brings him great pleasure right for his good pleasure so uh verse 14 he says um, do all things without complaining or disputing okay so do all things without complaining or disputing now now the thing is you know uh, many times we might ask you know, how can i not complain about something right how can i not some let's say something is not right okay now i need to I need to bring it to somebody's notice, right? I need to talk about it, maybe to, uh, <laughs> excuse me, maybe to, uh, <clears throat> uh, to, uh, to, to someone. And you know, how how can things change if I don't say, okay, hey, this thing is, you know, this is not right. Okay, let's say in ministry, in in work, uh, maybe in a family kind of a thing, situation. You know, how can I not say? You know, it's like. Um, if, if let's say I, you know, it's like that um, thing that we hear, you know, like, 
this guy goes to somebody's home for a meal <clears throat> and uh, they serve him some some food I don't know, let's say uh, I don't know you know let's say some some vegetable okay uh, let's say um, potato fried potato or fried potato is actually nice you know? so, let's say cabbage okay some fried cabbage now uh, so he looks at the plate he says okay everything else I like this I don't like okay so he finishes that first right and because he finishes that first the the host like that person thinks okay wow I think he likes it a lot so he, she she serves some more and says okay no I think he likes it so this guy is like uh, he doesn't say no you know I don't want but he he he, he wants to eat the other things which he enjoys but he but he wants to finish this thing which he does not enjoy first so that he can spend so he eats that again and the host sees that oh he must be really enjoying it i need to serve him some more and then puts you know it's like that right suppose we see something which is you know which needs to change and then we we don't you know do anything about it <laughs> our prince is saying it's happened to me yeah uh, that's true you know when we when we don't say okay we can't say it's you know it's it's we can't say to their face that it's you know i don't like it but uh, we need to say something so that they don't serve it again right so anyway so here so you might you know ask the question you know, so how do i you know bring things to change you know how do i do it without uh, com- you know without bringing it to notice but we can do that without complaining and disputing okay so the words when, when we look at the greek there it talks about murmuring okay what kind of murmuring uh, it's an internal murmuring you know secret murmuring right we are uh, you know, just saying oh this guy is like that or oh, this thing this work is like this this uh, oh this ministry is like this or oh, they're always doing like this so it's a secret thing it's a secret murmuring it's like a secret debate that is or, or an argument that's going on on the inside of you right so that's that's what it talks about and uh, so you're not doing anything to change it but inside you're just going on and on 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 you know saying negative things about it uh, and um, and maybe it'll lead to gossip right um, and also the other uh, other word you know complaining and disputing okay that's also uh, an inward reasoning okay an inward reasoning you know somebody says something and then immediately there's an inward reasoning it's like oh that will never work oh that so you're not voicing it there is no there's no healthy uh, discussion but uh, inwardly you're just canceling it right inwardly you're just saying oh oh this is no good no this thing cannot work okay so you see that now that is not healthy right because it's not going to bring any change you are going to feel so negative that your action is going to be negative it's not going to be constructive in any nature you know you're not going to solve the problem because you're not going to talk about it right um so paul is saying you know do all things without doing that you know without that thing you know canceling it out speaking negative things within yourself you know see we we, we studied in uh, galatians then see paul says when he saw that Peter was actually uh, he would eat with the Gentiles when the non when the Jewish uh, when the, when there were no Jewish people around and then he would distance himself when certain people came uh, from you know who were known to the disciple the Apostle James so Peter actually withstood him sorry Paul withstood him right in the sense he he told peter right there in front saying hey, what you're doing is wrong you, know, you cannot do this you cannot live a life a hypocritical life uh, you, you cannot pretend to be someone in front of others and then when in someone to be someone else in front of another group of people you cannot do that right so we know when he's saying do all things without complaining or disputing he's talking about you know some internal things right? and that's what the greek words also uh, refer to internal murmurings internal reasonings uh, which is not actually helping solve the problem okay so do all things uh, without that verse 15 that you may become blameless 
and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Okay, so, <laughs> so you're saying, um, you know, this is something that you need to do. Okay, if you live this way without complaining, disputing, um, then you'll become blameless and harmless. Okay, you're not going to cause harm to others. You're not, you know, you, you're not, uh, no one can blame you. Okay, so you, you don't, you're free from blame, free from, you know, people pointing fingers at you. So, you know, you're free of all reproaches, right? uh, above reproach your life so uh, and um, he talks about being harmless right and then he says um, and the word that is is used there is that um, uh, you know it's it, it means innocent of course but it also the picture that we have is that uh, something that is pure something that is not mixed adulterated okay it is like um, you know some Let's say if it's a, it, it normally refers to metal or you know any other uh, any other material, which does not have any defective material mixed with it. Let's say you know if it's if it's milk, uh, then it's pure milk. You know it's not uh, half a liter milk and half a liter water, which has diluted it. Right? He's saying uh, it does not have any mixture in it. Right? So you become blameless and harmless. You're innocent through and through right it's not like you're holding any grudge it's not like you are you know saying one thing and doing another thing yeah because you're not doing that you're not having that internal reasoning and internal debate and you're not holding anything against someone or you're not having that internal conversation against someone you know sometimes that you know that can be a very dangerous thing you know maybe it is with a fellow believer maybe it is with a family member maybe it is with a leader like a spiritual leader, maybe a pastor or someone who's, you know, giving oversight and somebody might be preaching and then you, you know, internally are saying, oh, as if you do it, you don't do it. You know, you're not tell telling that person directly, but you're having that on the inside. Okay. So it is like a mixture. Like it is, it is good and bad. You, you, you might be sincere in wanting to follow the Lord and you love the Lord, you love his word. Uh, etc. But then you have this thing going on on the inside, which is causing you to become defective, which is causing you to become, you know, mixed with something that is not good. Okay, so he's saying, if you do this, do all things without complaining and disputing, so that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault, okay, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. So, um, so he's saying, okay, you, you you are in the world. Okay, there is no uh, escaping that. Right, we are right now in the world, in a society uh, uh, surrounded by people who do not share your own your values, who do not understand, you know, why you live the way you live. Um, maybe their minds are blinded to the gospel. So you are in the midst of you know such a kind of people and uh, he goes on to say that uh, they are you know perverse uh, a crooked generation okay um, they are, they might call good as bad and bad as good right uh, they this standard for living the standard for um, uh, living life is could be totally twisted right? uh, could be totally different so who might, who might be you know gossiping, murmuring, complaining, uh, backstabbing, right, uh, and and speaking words that are, um, you know, it, it's it's shocking, right? When you if you if you just look at some of the social media, right, you see some of the videos. You know, it's like shocking people using words, bad language, um, just like an ordinary thing, right, and. Uh, and uh, the other day, and I was just listening to 
some some college uh, students and some you know uh, some some uh, yeah college students are school kids I think slightly older teens and and the kind of language they're using and it was shocking right? in every sentence um, so you know that's the kind of culture that we see that's the kind of people who are there and uh, more than that you know the the backstabbing the gossip and uh, bringing people down and saying something in front of people but then going behind their back and doing something else you know this is quite common in in the culture that we live in in the world that we live in but we are not off that world we are not off that you know culture and values and so on so um so he's saying that you will be uh, like you will shine as lights right? you will be blameless and harmless in this kind of a generation and you will shine as lights because they need the light that you are shining right that your truth the uh, of which you stand for shines as light they need the light uh, they are in darkness they need the light and uh, you among whom you will shine as lights okay Verse 16 is, uh, the first part of it is, is part of verse 15 as well, right? Or, or, the, or the entire verse is part of verse 16 as well. So what is he saying? He's saying, holding fast the word of life. Okay, you shine as light, but you're holding fast the word of life. You're holding fast the, the, the logos. Right? He uses the word logos, the logos, yeah, the, the word of God. Uh, and it is the word of life, you know, it, uh, and he uses the word zoe, right, which is not biological life, you know, that, that would be another word, bios, but here he's using the word zoe, right, so holding fast to the logos of zoe, right, the word of God, the word of life, the life producing, the God kind of life producing word of God. What, do you, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to hold fast, meaning let your grip on the word of God, pay attention to it, uh, have a strong grip on it. Okay, don't, uh, don't leave it, right? Uh, hold on to it, be it at the center. It's not like you, you know, you, you need to just know that information, but that information should become an experience. How will it become an experience? You know, when you when you live it out, uh, like just like how we see in James that you know you be a hearer, be a doer. You need to do be both. You know, unless you hear, you cannot do, and unless you do, you know, uh, you you will not be actually going back to hear more because uh, you'll just be deceiving yourself, right? So uh, is 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 a saying that you know you need to hold fast you need to have a strong grip you need to give attention to uh, the word of god and you need to pay attention to applying it making it relevant and real in our lives uh, so the question is you know even as we've been you know doing all these book studies and we've been studying you know how much of it are we applying daily in our lives right so are we studying it and okay we're talking about okay this was written during this time and it was written to these kind of people all that is you know important is necessary we need to know the context in which uh, it was written um etc but about that we need to know that hey it applies to me today right and uh, since i'm reading it since i'm giving attention to it uh, I need to apply these truths in my life. So how much of it am I applying in my own life? Right? <coughs> um, so the instruction that is there, the challenges that are presented there, um, the way I you know, asked to change, how much of it am I doing in my life? We need to ask ourselves. Okay. And not to condemn ourselves, but to hold ourselves accountable to it and say, okay, let me do it. Let me apply it. Now, here is the situation. And uh, yeah, this is the right situation for me to apply this. Not God's word. Let me apply it. Okay. Um, so that is what uh, we need to do. So holding fast the word of life, we will shine as light right? in this darkness. But if we do not hold fast to this logos of Zoe, 
then you know where is your light going to come from it will just keep fading there is no life yeah so um, so that is what it says so so he says you know that i might rejoice in the day of christ you know when you hold fast when you shine in his light he's saying you know this is the satisfaction that i get out of my ministry and out of the out of my life itself you know so that i might so he says that uh, that i may that i have not run in vain or labored in vain okay run in vain meaning that i've lived my life you know the way i've conducted my life Okay, so we're all called to run this race with endurance, right? Hebrews talks about that. Hebrews twelve. So, uh, so he's saying, you know, that so that I may I may not have run in vain. That it's not a futile exercise. Uh, my life is not, a, you know, it's it's not an empty one. Right? And all the things that I've done, all the labor, all the work that I've done, that you know, so that it's it's not in vain. Okay, so so on the day of Christ. uh in the day of christ that i will rejoice to see all that happen you know when i see you and i see that the kind of life that i know that oh this is how you lived your life that give that will give me i will be able to rejoice on that day okay um so it it's linked to each and every believer holding fast the word of life so for us also you know um the the moment we uh, our grip on the word of god you know and i say i got grip on the word of god you know the the intensity with which we maybe spend time with the word we make time uh um, you know in, in for prayer and everything um you know in our walk with the lord now the minute that intensity goes down you know yeah, or keeps going down you know that uh it's it's dangerous right we know that we will make some foolish mistakes foolish choices foolish decisions decisions uh maybe we might even open out open up doors right for the enemy to come in we we become weak ourselves in faith right uh, spiritually we are you know we become we make ourselves a target for the enemy even though the enemy is defeated the enemy and can come with lies accusations deceptions we make ourselves a target for all that we are not strong okay so it's important that we hold fast to the word of life okay verse 17 yes and if i'm being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith i'm glad and rejoice with you all for the same reason you also be glad and rejoice with me so i saying for this you know for this reason if i'm being poured out as a drink offering so uh um, you know he's saying that if you know if if my life is offered as a as a sacrifice uh in servicing you know in 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 ministering to your needs uh if i you know since i'm taking uh, it's like you know somebody who's in the army or somebody who's in the civil services um someone who takes a oath to uh to carry out a particular service so he's saying you know this service that i'm doing uh, this ministry that i'm doing um since since that i'm you know if that uh, the, the way i'm doing it it's it's actually like a uh, being offered upon and that my life is being offered as a as a as a drink offering you no know, it's uh, i'm being offered as a as a sacrifice it's um so he's saying that my life is uh, is being offered for this um i'm being poured out and every day whatever i do it's 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 like a it's like a sacrifice you know, and i'm being offered uh, as a sacrifice and um, and saying okay it's uh, if i do that you know that's fine right uh, he's is absolutely okay is uh, is fine with that <laughs> excuse me um so uh, so he's saying you know um um i'm glad and i rejoice with you all okay so even though i'm being offered out poured out you know maybe physically emotionally Uh, like he's being it's like he's being poured out is everything that he's been doing it's taking a lot out of him but uh, if it is so i am glad and i i rejoice 
right? Um, so, you know, this drink offering is something that we see in, in the Old Testament, right? In in the Book of Numbers, um, so uh, we see that, right? We um, uh, Numbers fifteen, I think, four and five. Let's just look at that. Um, okay, so uh, then he who presents his uh, offering to the Lord shall bring a grain offering of one tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with one fourth of a hin of oil and one fourth of a hin of wine as a as a drink offering and you shall prepare with the burnt offerings or the sacrifice for each land. Now just see that um, uh, mentioned there and also I think um, like if you turn to chapter 28 and verse 7 and its drink offering shall be one fourth of a hen for each land in a holy place you shall pour out the drink to the Lord as an offering. So he's saying, you know, my life, it literally, it is being sacrificed okay, for this cause. Um, like, in, and it's poured out like an offering to the Lord. So this service that I do, it's, it's really literally an offering to God himself. Okay, so saying it, it, it is that. So if it is so, then I am glad and I am rejoiced with you all. So we know that a sacrifice is painful. A sacrifice will uh, is costly, costs you something, right? Yeah. Um, it means maybe taking on some effort and responsibilities. It means to give up certain things. So he's done all that, and he's saying, "I'm glad, and I rejoice, right, with you all." Okay, and uh, for the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Okay, that's verse 18. Okay, let's read um, verses uh, 19 onwards, a few verses. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus, but you know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once, as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Okay, so this is about Timothy. He says, you know, I'm trusting the Lord to send Timothy to you shortly. So Timothy is with him right now. He's saying, you know, um, and uh, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. So how you are doing spiritually, you know, I, I just like to send Timothy to you. And um, and then he says something about Timothy. For he says, you know, for I have no one like-minded, you know, in the same mind, same wavelength, uh, same burden, right? Same burden, same desires. I have no one who thinks about ministry, thinks about ministering to you in the same manner. So he says, uh, who will sincerely care for your state. Because everywhere he says he talks about some of the false apostles and false um, you know ministers of God. So he's saying that they all seek their own. Verse twenty one, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. You know they are they are selfish. They are being selfish. They all they have selfish ambitions. So they all seek their own. What I can get out of this, right? Uh, how can I take something out of pe these people? Like we read in Second Corinthians, right? Paul talks about that kind of a uh, scenario there, uh, where people were uh, traveling, uh, itinerant ministers who were peddling the word of God, right? They were adulterating, mixing. They were, you know, maybe um, uh, not really presenting the truth as they should, and they were saying certain things, doing certain things for their own benefits. So saying, you know, you know, these kind of people are there. Verse 22, but you know his proven character. Like Timothy's character, which has been proved over and over again. Right? You know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Now this is how he 
so not as someone who was <coughs> sorry excuse me <clears throat> not as someone who was uh, you know like uh, who was hired um not as someone who was detached who was just do his work um and go because you know the way uh, someone in the family serves is very different from the way someone who could be you know i'm sure you know there are people who are loyal when you hire them and you know but when when you know that you know um they <clears throat> consider themselves as family and when they work you know that they'll sincerely care right care for the things care for the business care for the work that has been entrusted to them they are faithful they'll fiercely guard uh, what has been entrusted they fearfully i mean fiercely uh you know if if someone wants to uh, do things that are um, you know that that are detrimental to the to the owner i'm talking about a business you know they well they would they would be very fiercely uh, loyal like so he's, he's saying he's comparing timothy to such a person and he's saying you know all seek their own but you know his proven character that as a son with the father he served with me in the gospel uh, so this is how he served therefore i hope to send him at once as soon as i see how it goes with me and i trust in the lord that i myself shall come shortly so right now he's in prison but his hope and expectation is that uh, that he will come and meet with the church in philippi you know um uh, he, he he expresses something uh, like this um even in chapter 1 chapter 1 he also um uh, he talks about that that uh, you know these things have happened because of uh, of the gospel this is why i am in chains um and i'm you know and he's saying you know being confident of this i know that i shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of uh, salvation um uh, joy of faith sorry so he he talks so his expectation is that uh, that he will uh, see him he will he will he will be able to meet with them he will be able to see them uh, he'll be able to minister to them right that is his expectation um so he he voice he expresses that here again he says uh, you know that i'll be able to um uh, I'll, I'll you know i i'll i myself shall come to you shortly okay okay then the last part of uh, chapter 2 yet i consider it necessary to send to you epaphroditus okay another uh, person who was uh, along with paul in his team my brother fellow worker and fellow soldier but your messenger and the one who ministered to my need since he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick and indeed he was sick almost unto death but god had mercy on him and uh, not only on him but on me also lest i should have sorrow upon sorrow therefore i sent him the more eagerly that when you see him again you may rejoice and i may be less sorrowful receive him therefore in the lord with all gladness and hold such men in esteem because for the work of christ he came close to death not regarding his life to supply what was lacking in your service towards me okay so it's talking about epaphroditus and the way he ministered he calls him his brother fellow worker fellow soldier and similar to you know timothy um and uh, he was someone who came from the macedonian church from philippi and so uh, he says you know um, <coughs> and the one who ministered to many it was probably the philippines uh, sent him you know uh, uh, as a messenger who's um, who sent him with uh, things to take care of paul's uh, needs right so he came and uh, he was there to minister to him so and and he talks about epaphrodite for his physical health he was that he was almost sick and he almost died right uh, he was uh, and then but god had mercy god healed him and he had mercy and therefore paul says you know i sent him to you more eagerly 
and uh, when you see him again that you may rejoice and i'll be less sorrowful right so he says you know receive him in the lord and treat such men with esteem you know respect them esteem them for they for the work of the gospel they came close to death he came close to death um and but he did not regard his life he did not care he just wanted to you know work for the sake of the gospel and and and, and he came as a messenger to supply you know um, from from the philippine church and to supply what was lacking so you know treat such people with high esteem he says okay so we'll stop here take a break and when we come back we'll start with chapter 3 okay we'll take a 10 minute break now <laughs> 